Hello and welcome to this mid-morning, late morning taste challenge we have from 1760. This company goes back to 1760 in the United States Virgin Islands. Well, up until 103 years ago it was the Danish Virgin Islands owned by Denmark. Denmark's one of Denmark's few overseas possessions, which was what? the Danish Virgin Islands, Greenland, Iceland, Bornholm Island in the Baltic Sea and Denmark itself. So now it's four places, Denmark and then three um, possessions in the sea, Bornholm Island. Oh, and I forgot the Faroe Islands. Get it together. The Faroe Islands, what am I thinking? They're up there way north of Scotland. They're cold. Self-governing uh, realm of the Kingdom of Denmark. They used to have a pretty big empire, uh, bigger than that. Um, they used to own Norway. That's right. Used to own um, some territories in northern Germany, which they lost in a war with Germany. <laughs> uh, anyway, Denmark. Denmark. They owned, and people from Denmark, the Nelthrop family, started in this company in 1810, and they continued to run the production at that plantation, sugar uh distillery rum distillery in uh saint croix in the virgin islands i'd like to visit it someday united states virgin islands now the british virgin islands that's a whole different story we're not going to get into that i'm sure there's some good rums coming from there right okay this is the age dark rum they say dark i don't really think it's too dark but it's darker than the clear than the clear and um it's aged between two and four years. It doesn't give a definitive age statement, but it does give a, a range, an age range statement. Two to four years, minimum of two and no longer than four. It's probably, from what I can gather, it's a blend of different aged rums, two, three, four, and they put it together and there you go. Now with the Virginia Black Whiskey, it's a blend of three different aged bourbons, two, three and four year aged. But um, they don't give a range. They do on the website, but on the bottle it says two year old whiskey because you got to go with the youngest age. But here they're, uh, I guess since they're not being definitive, they're allowed to say that between two and four. Maxwell, hello again, Ron. So, hey Maxwell, welcome from the Russian Federation, way out in Russia. Uh, so I guess since they don't, like I say, if they don't make a definitive age statement, then it's not considered a, technically that they're making an age statement. Blake TV, good morning, Ron. Hello, Blake. Another Southern American or American that lives in the South. All right. Castillo, Castillo, Castillo Castle in English, but Castle Rum, Spanish, Castillo. Founded in Puerto Rico. This was introduced by a company called Ron de Castillo EC. EC, yeah. Ron de Castillo EC. That means Ron Castillo Rum and Company. Castillo Rum and Company. But they got bought out by Bacardi at some point. So it's a Bacardi International brand today, Bacardi Limited brand. But it goes back. I was checking the trademark. First used in 1914. There's the castle. And uh, there's the castle. It's sold by Bacardi as a value brand, value price brand. And on the back, like all you Bacardi rum bottles, they'll have a recipe, Castillo and Cola. So it's giving you specific instructions to make a Castillo and Cola. And if you look at any of these Bacardi rums, Bacardi brand rums, they'll have that little recipe idea. Okay, Cantano, Puerto Rico. Let 
Uh, it's a leader bottle. I don't need to read all these other things about when it was bottled and all that. It doesn't say bottled in the United States. So I assume it's bottled in Puerto Rico, unlike the Bacardi, which is bottled in Florida. It's got a, a real fine grain label. It's like you can feel the lettering and it's like fine, fine grain sandpaper. And it's an attractive label. It shows a map of the Caribbean. All right. And it shows Trinidad and Tobago and goes all the way around. Doesn't show Barbados because it's too far east. It goes all the way up to Puerto Rico. So mostly the lesser Antilles. The only greater Antilles it shows is Puerto Rico. And I guess Trinidad and Tobago would be more of a mid range, mid size. Anyway, it's gold, you see. And um, Bacardi is a Cuban originated rum, but they fled Cuba when the communists took over in 1959. They left, I think, in 62. They realized they're like, this is none. This, this is going to go nowhere, and they're going to steal all our stuff, which is what they did. That's why you got a Havana Club rum from Puerto Rico and a Havana rum from Cuba, Havana Club from Cuba. The one from Cuba is owned by the government. That's their brand. Say so we make the real Havana Club that we they don't say it like that, but we make the real Havana Club that we stole. And uh and then of course the Bacardi family in Puerto Rico is saying, wrong thieves, we make the real Havana Club in Puerto Rico because we own it and we've started it and it's our recipe. All right. So Bacardi's in Puerto Rico today. Now they say one day they want to go back to Cuba, Santiago de Cuba, and reestablish their independent company. So we'll pour the Cruzan first. I don't think Cruzan's going to do well because you know what? Cruzan has lost every competition so far. And that's a bad record. They're like uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. You know, it's like, are they going to win a game this year? And you start to have, you have doubts. You have doubts. And you say, well, they were in a lot of the games. They lost 17 to 14, 20 to 12, 31 to 24. Yeah, they were in it, but they, they still lost. But, they, you know, they competed, but they just didn't win. So this one has been competing, but they ain't winning. It's got a knight's helmet on there and a sword. I hadn't noticed that before. And it looked like a bird. A knight's helmet, a sword, and a bird. What does that mean? What does it mean? Is it a secret code? I don't know. Maybe they just thought it looked good. <laughs> All right. I keep saying Bacardi. Castillo. Now put the websites down below. This le Okay. How much was the cruise end? That's bottled in Illinois, by the way. Cruzan was $9.99 for the 750 milliliter bottle. In other words, a penny short of 10 bucks on sale at Albertsons. But Albertsons has this thing where everything is like on sale for perpetua in perpetuity. You know what I'm saying? Like you go back in four years, it's still on sale. Well, what they do is they don't want to get in trouble with the Better Business Bureau, so they'll say, because you can't run a perpetual sale because they say that's a, a unfair or a deceptive business practice. That's why uh, my pillow doesn't get an F score because they say, you know, you got this two for one offer. When do you not have a two for one offer? And the answer is, well, we always have a two for one offer. They say, well, then it's not a special offer. It's your regular price. You're just selling. You're selling the pills for the regular price. You're tricking people. Like if they don't order now, they won't get it. But they can wait and they'd still get the price. So um, they get an F rating. But their owner says, I don't care what you give me. I don't need y'all. I'm making millions of dollars every year. So I don't need your better business bureau to come on down on me. But, you know, Albertsons probably wants a good rating from them. So what they'll do on the tags, it'll say on sale. And they'll give you a date till like June 31st. Now, maybe June 1st, it's off sale. But then on June 2nd, they put new tags, new sale. It might go on for four months, see? So technically, it wasn't on sale in perpetuity, but in reality, it really is. Okay, now, um, so they're following this, the letter of the law, so to speak, but not the spirit of the law. So they're both 
gold. <sighs> Unaged Castillo. I mean, it's aged a little bit. You know, they put it in an oak barrel, charred or probably used barrels um, from Bacardi's other operations. And if you look at the Bacardi website, I'm looking right here, Bacardi Limited. Oh, it goes on and on about how awesome they are. You know, these companies are the same way. So, but uh, Bacardi has a portfolio of more than 200 brands and labels spanning a wide variety of spirits categories. The company is to develop and, and acquire new brands. So they're listing some of the brands. They're not listing 200 here. No way. But they're saying Bacardi Rum, of course, the world's best-selling rum. Dewar's Blended Scotch Whiskey, one of the top selling whiskeys, Scotch whiskeys. Bombay Sapphire Gin, another popular one. Grey Goose Vodka, Martini, Vermouth and Italian Sparkling Wines. You, you go to any grocery store, well, in Louisiana grocery store, so on, and you're going to see Martini. Patron, Lick Tequila, yeah, everybody sell, everybody all store sell it. Aristotle Vodka. Now, now, that one you don't see everywhere, but Casadori's Tequila. Casadori's. I'm starting to see that around. William Lawson's blended Scotch whiskey. I've never seen that one in a store, but that might be one that they sell like to Canada, you know, or Africa, but they don't sell it to the United States. Now the Bacardi portfolio. I ain't about to read all these Bacardi brands. And then Castillo, silver. I have that. Gold. I have that. Añejo. Never bought that. Seen it once. Spice. See that everywhere. Never bought it. Oak Heart Spice Rum. And it goes on and on and on until the break of dawn. Uh, Facundo Rum Collection, Neo, Eximo, Exquisito, Parizo. I don't know. There's so many. You can't, you can't keep up. You can't keep up. And then there's the uh, Cruzan, an exquisite blend of rums. Um, is it really exquisite? <laughs> Age two to four years in charred oak cask, which is typical for all rum. So there, a lot of these companies will tell you things that isn't really remarkable because they all do it, but they make it sound remarkable. And then they go on talk about how it has a wonderful, smooth, medium body to aromatic taste with every slow sip. And it goes on and on. And uh, you can look at the website. That's why I put the notes. Nice looking website, kind of basic, but nice, you know, nice. Look a little old, a little old data, but I don't care if it's old as long as it's functional. <laughs> I don't prefer the taste of Castillo gold, says Kevin Johnson. You don't like it too much? You'd rather have the uh, Cruzan? Well, that's one thing about taste. Everybody's got different tastes. But I like you might not. What you like, I might not. It's like in rock and roll club. Some people get angry. Like, I got to go check the music out later and listen to all of it. They'll post a song. Oh, it's so great. And then I listen to it and I think, and I'm very open-minded. I'll listen to anything. And I'll say, Mm, it's not too good to me. It's like, ding, 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 ding. oh, baby, I'm going to get next to you. And I'm like, God, it's terrible. You know, why would they listen to that? This guy can't sing and he, his songs are terrible. His voice is bad. And people say, but it's, he's so, he's so full of heart. His heart is in it, man. Don't you get it? I don't care if his heart is in it. I just, it sounds like garbage to me, but I won't say hostile things like that. I'll just make a statement. Oh, I never heard that before. I'll put first time listen for me. I always put that abbreviation. First time listen for me. I'm letting, know people, letting people know I'm listening to it, not ignoring your pose. But sometimes they'll press me on it. Well, what do you think? Now, I didn't put a like. Now, if I didn't put a like, that should clue you in. If I liked it, I'd have liked it, right? But I didn't put a like. I don't go around just perfunctory putting a like on everybody's stuff. I had a fellow beer beer reviewer. She used to do hangouts with me all the time. She got angry. She started getting angry at me like, why don't you like my stuff? I'm like, I never had those beers. I mean, I'm glad you posted the photos. But how can I like something that I never had? I mean, it would be You would be assuming that I liked it. And I did. And she said, well, I like everybody's stuff. I said, well, okay. Well, I don't do that. And that was like the beginning of the trouble. So I was like, well, nobody's going to pressure me to do that. 
You know, social media can go jump off a cliff for all I care. And so when they press me on Rock and Roll Club, I'll be like, um, it's not that good, I guess. Or I'll say it, try to be gentle about it. Like, well, it's not really for me. You know, it's not my kind of music. Now, if they want to get hostile, like, well, only, you know, you got to be really insightful and love good music to appreciate it. And I'll be like, I do like good music. I got a lot of Judas Priest albums. You know, then it'll start some. But you know the type. Okay, this one smells very Bernie. Oh, wow. And I don't mean like Weekend at Bernie. I mean like Bernie. Like it burns. Like it burns. It burns. It burns. That was regular old tap water. Now, I prefer Bacardi Black. Oh, yeah. Me too. But if I'm mixing, I'll use Cruzan to save money. Makes sense. I got you. Ooh, this is a burn. And it's got wood in my nose. It's like, uh, <laughs> I went to a wood factory. No, it's really woody in the nose. It's like harsh in the nose. It's like, wow. Well. Which one is it? I don't know. Because I remember the Castillo kind of weird. Let's go with the nose here. It's been months since I had Castillo. Months? Well, a good while. Oh, this smells like nuts. You're saying almonds, huh? Yeah, kind of like almonds. And walnut oil. Well, uh, you know what, friends? I don't recall Cruzan smelling like any kind of nut oil or nut shell or nut meat. You know what it smells like? Harsh wood burn. But it does kind of come alive as it breathes, you know. Like you start getting some um, underlying light molasses and like a yeast and even like a little touch of a wine like a uh, you say a wine he's so dumb he's so dumb no it is kind of like a wine i don't know what kind though maybe a sherry wine um funny thing about these if you let them breathe you'll get more enjoyment from from them um, okay, so Castillo started off kind of burny, but it's fading. That's kind of dissipating. It's kind of like when beers are real skunky. Stuart Picard, he's the one that told me that with Jen Riel Trail. He said, just let them sit for one minute, and a skunk will go right away. And I said, okay, and I did, and it does work. A minute or two, two minutes. <clears throat> Now, do either one of these smell great? Nah. The Castillo was $7.99 for a liter. $7.99 for a liter at Discount Depot. And the Cruzan was $9.99 for a $7.50. So already, we talking way cheaper for the Castillo. Meaning what? It means that the Cruzan better really perform right now, or it's going to lose by default on price. Because I'm not paying a lot more to get nothing more. You know what I'm saying? You might, I'm not. Now, if I'm collecting cans and bottles for my beer collection, oh yeah, well, of course I'll extra for that because I want it in my collection. But in a general sense, a normal sense, I don't pay extra for getting, I don't pay extra to get nothing more. Mm -mm, not me, you might, I'm not. Somebody did a video I was watching this morning about Hennessy being an overpriced, overhyped brand. And he was drinking it and he was like, it's really not that great. He didn't know, he never said it was bad or like unpleasant. He just says, not that great. Why would you pay $40 for a bottle of Hennessy when you can get a lot of other stuff that's better than it for a much cheaper? And I agree with that. I said, well, they're buying the name, you know, they're buying the image and the name. But you got real close minded people. So if you went out with your friends on a Saturday night or Friday night and you brought Oh, I don't know, Sarah and me, VSOP. They'd be like, oh, that ain't Henny. That's not Hennessy, dog. And you'd be like, I know, I did that on purpose because this is $16 a bottle and it's way better than Hennessy. But in their mind, they wouldn't believe it. Even, But if you gave them a blind taste test, they'd probably pick the other one. But that's the way it is. 
You know, you're not going to see Sam Remy commercials advertising with a, with a rap star, you know, because they don't really advertise. They just make good stuff. Okay. Um, oh, uh, that's so wood. Oh, uh, that's so alcohol burn. Oh, uh, that's so not great. <laughs> you say it's kind of like a B minus, huh? Yeah, kind of like that. <laughs> Very Cruzanian. <laughs> I'm not totally dogging on Cruzan though. I'm not ripping on it because I'm looking at a base model here. This is like the basic thing. Are those Cruzan highfalutin, high level ones a lot better? I would imagine they are and they probably cost a lot more and they probably justify the price. So, but I like to start low and climb the ladder. Uh, yeah, this is pretty good. When I first drank the Castillo, it tasted like olive oil or something. Olive oil. Not extra virgin, just like pure olive oil. It's kind of nut flavored, kind of. Oh, man, they got a real burn on them, though. Man, both of these, they're just like 40 proof alcohol. You know, it's like you cut your leg and you went to the doctor's office and you could smell the antiseptic in the doctor's office while you're waiting. And I've said that for a lot of, I use that analogy for a lot of blended whiskey and now rum. And it, it kind of tastes and smells like the antiseptic alcohol burn. I know that's wood alcohol that they make rubbing alcohol out of. This is sugar alcohol and then bourbon or blended whiskey, I mean or bourbon too, is grain whiskey, grain alcohol, ethanol. But still, it's like, ah, wah, wah, ah, wah, wah, wah. Gives you the willies, or like they say down here, around here in Louisiana, I got the freeze on. <laughs> Give me the freeze on. But anyway, it's still not terrible, but they're made to mix. I'm telling you right now, 99%, I bet you it's that high. I bet you it's that high. 99% of the people buying this stuff are mixing it. And I don't even mean they're following these recipes, making some elaborate mixed drink. They should do that, but they're probably not doing that. <laughs> they're probably buying Hawaiian punch, getting it real cold and pouring it in a cup. He said, oh, a plastic cup, huh? That's right. And some of this rum, and they're drinking it. Why wow, they watch Scooby-Doo reruns. Now, that sounds terrible, but that's what they're doing. They're coming home from work. They might have worked night shift. They're sitting in front of TV, watching the morning news, because that's their evening. You know, they all sleep during the day. And they're going to take Hawaiian punch, or, or, or it could be Delaware punch. You know, Delaware punch, kind of like a little better kind of soft drink. I didn't say it was good. I say a little better than normal. If you want good, get Mexican Coke made with sugar. Or get the pure sugar Dr. Pepper. Or um, there's a new one that's coming out. They were saying look for it with real sugar. Um, well, that's the new thing now. Since it's like way better. <laughs> like way better. But um. But they're not even gonna, they might get store brand like Food Club or Walmart, great value soft drink, which is dreadful. Those are all dreadful. Sure, fine. They're all just check from Winn Dixie, Southern Grocers. They're all dreadful. And mixing that with this stuff and drinking it while they watch Scooby Doo reruns or the news. No, that, can't, that might sound bad. And I know you're going to say, what are they eating? A Morton's pot pie? Yeah, something like that. Or some Slim Jims. Um, it's really basic. Now, could could you, could you take these products and make a credible cocktail with it? Yes, I believe you could. I don't think they put the recipe on here to just be flip or to put it on there. One part Castillo gold, three parts cola. Please use an all sugar cola though. You know, live a little. I don't mean violate 
Dave Ramsey's advice, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you want to avoid debt. You want to pay your, your bills off. You want to live debt free if you, if, and it is possible, you know, eventually. And so, but, but I know people that got a lot of money and they live like a, a miser, like they're poor. I know people like this. They live like they're poor, old tattered clothes, be hot in their house, don't run an air conditioner. They've got hundreds of thousands of dollars in their savings account. Got no house note. That's a sick, they're sick. You know what I mean? It's like they're sick. Um, I mean, being frugal is smart. Being tight like that is insane. But buy something. Okay, so you said, well, I want to save money and buy Castillo. Okay, fine. Save money and buy it. It's not terrible. One part Castillo gold, three parts cola, pour and get the sugar cola like I was just preaching. Pour over ice in a tall glass. I'll show you what kind of glass. You could use this kind of glass, this Tabasco glass. I bought a four, I bought four of these at a yard sale for like 25 cents a piece. No joke. They're beautiful too. McElhaney Tabasco glasses. You can buy the most fantastic things in a yard sale. But um, pour it in a tall glass, stir it with a little stirrer. And if you don't have one of those, use a spoon or a fork. <laughs> oh my goodness. Garnish with a lime wedge. Well, that sounds like that would be pretty good. One part Castillo gold, three parts cola, pour over ice in a tall glass, like I just showed you. Garnish with a lime wedge. Wedge. There you go. Now, see? Then you can go be do reruns. Do you have skull rum? Yes, I do. I'll show you right now. In fact, this is the next. This is the next one in the lineup. This is coming in uh, to battle to do battle on Thursday morning. If that happens, which I assume it will, but you never know. Skull. Uh, rich gold. That's right. It's called rich gold. Well, I didn't find it was too rich. When I think of rich, I, I think of like real sweet, sugary, like cake icing and stuff. People say, I can't eat it. It's making me sick. It's too rich. I think of things like that, but they might mean like fancy or something. That's a really good product. And I got it for $6.99 a liter. $6.99 a liter, that was a dollar less than the Castillo gold, I know, and it's it's way better than you would think. A lot of people see Skull and they're like, no, that's the horrible, it's, I had terrible nightmares, my life got wrecked at one point with Skull vodka, you know, that's the cheap vodka Skull, and they go on and on, so I'm thinking, boy, they must have really partied hardy, you know, and I see Skull everywhere, man, Run, uh, vodka? Walmart, Winn-Dixie, Matherns, everybody sells Scholar in Louisiana, every gas station. In other words, if anybody sells liquor in Louisiana, they always have Skull. That is without question. Without question. Now, can it be that bad if everybody sells it? You say, that's oh, all marketing. They say that for Budweiser. It's all marketing. Well, it sure ain't marketing for Skull, because when's the last time you ever saw Skull marketed? Exactly. You never saw it marketed. But there it is in every single liquor outlet in this state. They ain't going to stock it if it ain't one. Somebody's buying it. I'm sure they don't buy it and say, oh, it's so horrible. I can't wait to come home and drink it. Yeah, right. I'm sure that's what they're saying. No, they're probably saying, well, you know, it's okay. Hell, I'm mixing it with Dr. Pepper. You know, that kind of stuff. I'm mixing it with orange juice. Okay. If it works, it works. You know who makes Skull? You ain't going to see it on the Buffalo Trace tour. You know that. Go on a Buffalo Trace tour. I guarantee you won't see Skull. And they won't mention it. And if you bring it up, they might tell you get off the tour. You need to get off the tour. Yeah, but I heard it. Get off the tour. Yeah, but the guy said Skull. Get him out. Security and get him out. And he, as you're being drug out of the tour, I know about Skull. Wake up, people. 
Well, actually, if you go on a Militor, they do trumpet their cheap brands. Go on a Militor. We went on so many, and they'll be like, let's talk about malt liquor. And I literally got this big lit, lit up board. Here's all our malt, li malt liquors. And I'm like, wow, they actually acknowledge it. If you go on an Anheuser-Busch tour, they're like, yeah, well, mm -hmm. you're like, hey, don't y'all make King Cobra? And they're like, button it up. We ain't here to talk about that. Um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's so woody. Oh, now, nah. I'm saying that in a negative way, too. But the skull is woody, too. Oh, it's so dry, too. But yet, but yet, it, it doesn't have um, like an unpleasant woodiness. It's hard to describe. You have to try them and think on them, drink on them, and all that. I don't know. Skull is a great value. Well, there's somebody saying it. Kevin Johnson. Johnston. Sorry, I said Johnson. Johnston. Skull is a great value. Well, there he says it. Oh, man. I, I, I never tried Skull. You know, I don't do vodka, but um, my fr uh, friend, Eric Fraunfelter, Thomas Metal 75, did a blind taste test with vodka. I'm going to talk to him this week, maybe today, and I'm going to say, hey, you want to try some of these inexpensive ones? I would like to see what you think about Taka. I know you can get Taka in Massachusetts. That's everywhere in America. Skull, I'm not sure. Oh, and the third one, he could do like Fleischmann's or Crystal Palace or uh, Dobra. That's another one you see in Louisiana, Dobra, Dobra Vodka. I don't see it too much, but I mean, I see it. Matherns gets it. And believe me, there ain't no way they're going to carry it if it doesn't sell. Believe me. If Matherns has a product and it doesn't move, it's gone. It'll be in that discount basket faster than you can say Jack Spratt could eat no fat. His wife could eat no lean and butt betwixt the two of them. They lick the platter clean. So um, somebody's Dobra. Now, I'm not into vodka. I'm telling you right now. Now, if they made Dobra rum uh, or or those kind of things, yeah, I'd buy them. I'd try them. I would. I would. I would try it. And I'm curious to almost in a perverse way, curious to try the uh, – What's that um, pharmacy? CVS. You say, don't even say that. Don't even say that to me that CVS sells their own house brand of liquor. They do. <laughs> I have to be honest. <laughs> I bought it. I bought the Grand Legacy blended whiskey. <laughs> does it taste really weird? It does taste strange. <laughs> it's like everything that's not right. It's not right, but it's still kind of good <laughs> all right um it's like you feel guilty drinking it because you say this is so wrong but yet it does kind of taste good so i'd be curious to try their rum the grand legacy rum oh my goodness <sighs> people say why don't you get out of all these oddball off the wall rum and whiskey brands and Drink some legitimate stuff that people can relate to. I want to do that. I really want to do that. It's a sickness in a way. Like if it's aberrant, I want to review it. I want to taste it. I want to do a video for it. Now I know what you're going to say. Yeah, but dude, you would get way more views if you did a credible rum like Sailor Jerry. It's there. The Kraken is there. You're playing around with these sub bottom shelf brands and you're like not getting the action that you could get. Yeah, but whoever said I was trying to get the action? That's the problem with the channel. I'm not chasing the views. I'm just doing the reviews. And I can feel that pull. I can feel CVS pulling me. It's like, come on, try it. You know it ain't going to taste right. You know it's going to be off. And I'm like, I know, and I can't resist. Okay, now, um, well, enough of the jibber-jabber. <clears throat> I, I really think this is the um, Cruzan. It's not that great, but still, they're not bad, and they would be, at the worst, B-minus. You could say, if you said C-plus, 
if you wanted to really hard sell C plus and you got really dedicated to that score, I wouldn't take issue with that. And honestly, you might even be able to convince me that it's a C plus and ain't no way a B. But I'm saying B minus for these. I'm saying they're like marginally good. I know it's going to say letter C. Letter C is Castillo. Oh. It's not Castillo. Anyway, what am I saying? Letter C is Cruzan. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> you drank too much. No, I meant, well, they're both C, right? Castillo, Cruzan. Ha, 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 I meant to say Cruzan, but it's not Cruzan. It's stinking Castillo. So, wow, the Castillo was more Bernie than the Cruzan? Mm, that's a shock. Well, you never know. Stinking Castillo. Oh, well. Still, I'll take one more sip. That's Cruzan then, huh? Still doesn't win, though. Because it's $9.99 for seven fifty, dollars and I can get the uh, Castillo for a liter. For $7.99, I'd buy the Castillo, but in reality, I wouldn't buy either one. You understand? I mean, I bought them to review. I wouldn't go buy them like a habit on purpose. <laughs> Not on purpose. Burnett's vodka sells like hotcakes here in Virginia. Oh. Don't even get me started behind that. I got to get off the air. It's been 37 minutes. Look, Burnett's, that's from Heaven Hill, people. When Burnett's hit this town about what, two years ago, year and a half ago, it was like a fire. A fire. Is there a bird trying to cling on to that? These birds, they like hang on to the um, screen, you know? <laughs> Why would you do that? Oh, um, and Burnett, they have all the flavored, you know, coconut, um, lemonade flavor, uh, wedding cake flavor. I mean, it goes on and on. Burnett's like you never heard of so many flavors. Oh, that sounds like crazy. I mean, absolute craziness. I never tried it. You know, you can get a whole liter for five ninety nine. Now, I don't know if it's good. I don't like vodka. I'm not a vodka guy. I'm certainly not into flavored vodka. I've tried taka. Taka was all right. People talk about how garbage taka is. I'm not seeing the garbage. It tastes all right to me. Taka 100 proof, same thing. It's all right. I, mean, I don't see what's garbage about it. I mean, I'm not attracted to it, but it's not garbage. It's not garbage. Um, but Burnett's is selling like madness at Mathern's. $5.99 a, a bottle, those big old glass bottles. And that stuff just Boom, 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 boom. Watermelon flavor. Oh, who knows what kind of flavor? Kiwi, whipped cream, any kind of crazy flavor. That stuff is just blowing out of that store, blowing out of that store. It's just like you said. So do people like to drink a lot of flavored vodka? Uh, obviously. Quite obviously. What about spice rum? You know that. That's the most popular type anyway. I never even messed with the spice rum, but people love it. It's my problem is a 70 proof, you know, it's kind of like a liqueur. There are a few 80 proof spice rums, right? But um, I don't know. I'm trying to get through all these regular unflavored rum brands, to tell you the truth. Okay, so that's it. So Burnett's is a is a huge winner. They don't do any advertising. I mean, you might go to a liquor store and they have a point of sale. The point of sale means like a poster or some little display set up, but it won't be on radio or television. Point of sale, where it's being sold, you see. All right, so, well, I'm a little shocked, a little shook up, I guess you'd say, for getting it wrong, but I'm not dismayed or intimidated because, after all, there are two budget brands. No one does videos on Cruzan and uh, Castillo, as you would find out by doing a search on YouTube. <laughs> So it is what it is. Now, uh, like I said, Thursday morning, we'll go ahead and do the uh, skull. 
I think Skull's going to win. I really think it's going to win by heads and tails, you know. I'm sorry, not heads and tails. That's what you do when you start in a football game. <laughs> Head and shoulders. <laughs> um, no. I mean, it'll be a tie, really, but but when you consider the price, it's going to win. Six ninety nine a liter, it's going to win. It won, it won already, and we haven't even started the contest. And then we'll close it out on Saturday, maybe Fandango Friday. James P. Madonna, better be listening. He ain't, he ain't watching. But um, um, Aristocrat, oh, well, you know, Aristocrat's all right. Nothing to get excited about. But it's nothing to get excited about either way, like super positive or super negative. It's just man, it's six ninety nine a liter. Once again, yeah, I did the Pontalba last Friday. Uh, that was pretty much what I thought it was going to be. All right, thanks for watching this video production. It's been going on too long, but it was very interesting to me. You might have hated it, but I liked it. All right, thanks for watching this video production.